Today we're going to be talking about sesamoiditis. We're going to jump into presentation, other presentations, radiographs, treatment options, specifically fractures, and most importantly, drift. Let's get started. The beat. In the human foot, there are 26 bones. The 27th and the 28th bone are known as the sesamoids. Sesamoids are bones embedded in tendons, and in a normal foot, there are two P-shaped bones located in the ball of the foot beneath the big toe joint at the location of the metatarsal head sesamoid articulation. This is an axial view of normal hallux sesamoids. This is a radiograph showing bipartite sesamoids, which are sesamoids in fragments. It is possible to differentiate a bipartite sesamoid from a fractured sesamoid. However, even bipartite sesamoids can be symptomatic and are often treated similar to a fractured sesamoid. The presentation of sesamoiditis is oftentimes pain, tenderness, inflammation, cartilage injury even at times and is located under the metatarsal head, and it's most commonly at the medial sesamoid. The sesamoids can be overloaded in other ways as well, and this is done from the perineus longus tendon, which can excessively pull on the attachment site, which can cause peroneal overdrive. Also note that a plantar flex first ray can put excessive pressure over the sesamoids. And you can see this radiographically as a plantar flex first array. It's important to get a contralateral view to help distinguish between bipartite sesamoids. Bipartite sesamoids on plane radiographs have a smooth edges and are larger in size compared to fractures. 34% of patients have bilateral bipartite sesamoids. That's another reason why you get a contralateral view. It's also important to get a history. Fractures are oftentimes followed by increased activity or other traumatic events. The most common treatment for a fractured sesamoid or sesamoiditis is really to begin with a cast then or a boot for three to six weeks. If it doesn't heal within six weeks, you could try a bone stimulator. Open reduction internal fixations are possible, but they're very uncommon. The most common thing you're going to be seeing is a sesamoidectomy, uh, which should be avoided if possible because there are complications we will talk about shortly here. Usually open reduction internal fixation is avoided. Uh, surgical treatment usually is difficult and it usually should be avoided as well. However, sesamoidectomy is the most common route to go and it is possible to remove a partial fragment of the fractured sesamoid bone. Now we're getting closer to a question that will likely be asked to you, uh, the complications of sesamoid surgery. After every conservative option has been attempted, the next step is surgery and that is taking out the sesamoid itself. If you're going to be taking out the fibular sesamoid or the lateral sesamoid, the approach is a plantar approach, and this is between the first and second metatarsal heads, dissection down and avoiding the digital nerve adjacent to the MPJ. Avoid the FHL tendon. We'll be talking about some complications in regards to this tendon shortly, which is oftentimes tested. In regards to the tibial or medial sesamoid surgery, a simple medial approach can be uh, accomplished a dissection down to the sesamoid uh, into the capsule, avoid the dorsal and the plantar sensory nerves, and also avoid the FHL tendon as well. Drift, a common complication, which is oftentimes tested on because it can be easily tested. And this is why you must know that if you are taking out a lateral or fibular sesamoid, then drift would happen medially. Meaning, 
that the sesamoids act as a pulley and taking out the fibular sesamoid will cause medial drift of the hallux or hallux varus. Also know this is the exact opposite for a tibial or a medial sesamoid. Taking out the tibial or medial sesamoid is actually going to cause lateral drift and this is because like I said the sesamoids act as a pulley and this is what is tested taking out which sesamoid will cause the hallux to go which way. Fibular causes hallux varus and tibial causes hallux valgus. Note that the flexor tendon sometimes may be repaired and also note that the remaining sesamoid will be taking most of the weight so sometimes that can become symptomatic as well. In a study of 26 tibial or fibular sesamoidectomies, there was a 19% complication rate with one hallux varus case, two hallux valgus cases, and two cases of postoperative scarring with neuroma type symptoms. Often there is a slight radiographic increase of hallux varus or valgus, but it is rarely clinically symptomatic. However, you will be heavily tested on which way the hallux will deviate after a sesamoidectomy. I hope this helps with treatment and also your general knowledge of this topic. Thanks so much, and let me know if you have any questions whatsoever. Sound off in the comments. Thank you.